Today on Ham Radio q and A, I I compare the Chameleon M-Pass and the Wolf River Silver Bullet. Which antenna is the better choice? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the Ham Radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, recently I was out camping at Brunette Island State Park in um, western Wisconsin. Autumn camping is the best time uh, to go as you get cooler temperatures, no bugs, and not many people. Uh, Brunette Island is located in Chippewa Falls in the western part of the state. It's a very popular park in the summer months uh, for its water access and uh, people that like to fish and canoe. So heading out there off-season was really a great idea, especially when you want to avoid the crowds. But my goals that weekend were twofold. First was to test out a couple of antennas and to get on the air for the Wisconsin Parks on the Air special event. Well, my Parks on the Air activation was a bit of the bust due to um, rain and other complications. Uh, but I did get to spend uh, you know, quite a bit of quality time comparing two HF vertical antennas. Now, the Chameleon MPAS-2 system and the Wolf River uh, Silver Bullet 1000 coil. Both are popular choices uh, for park activation, so I'm going to go through my personal uh, experiences in using these two antennas. Well, the reason I chose these, in, these two antennas, other than I own both of them, is that, well, you know, each one represents a different style of vertical antenna. Uh, the Silver Bullet uh, is an adjustable coil, similar in operation to other screwdriver style antennas, you know, like the Buddy Stick or the Super Antennas MP1. Now, my experiences with the Silver Bullet will be similar to those other models. So if you're, you know, thinking about a super antenna, you know, the information in this video, you know, may, you may find a little bit relevant. Now, the same is true for the Chameleon M-Pass. Uh, this uh, antenna uses a 5 to 1 transformer unit uh, instead of a coil to provide a reasonable match across the HF bands, of which you can use a, a tuner to, to kind of finish the job. Uh, and this is similar to the uh, Elf antennas, um, FMJ series, and uh, many other uh, random wire end-fed antennas on the market. So first, let's look at the specs of these two antennas. Uh, the Wolf River 1000 is a screwdriver type coil constructed out of stainless steel wire and a, um, and a sliding coupler. Uh, when combined with a 102 inch whip, it provides uh, tuning between 20 and 80 meter band. Uh, if you shorten the whip, uh, such as by using an extendable whip like the MFJ 1979, then you can also uh, tune it up to, the ten, up to the 10 meter band. So this is, a re this is considered a resonant antenna. You know, it's gonna handle about 200 watts sideband, 100 watts CW. It's also um, requires a uh, set of ground radios for best operation. Uh, the Chameleon MPAS or Modular Portable Antenna System is part of a larger system that can be configured in a, a vertical, horizontal, or wire uh, type deployments. Uh, the core component for the vertical use is the Hybrid Micro or Hybrid Mini Transformer. This is the little bit larger Hybrid Mini um, and that the Mini handles a little bit more power than the Micro does. Um, you also get 113 inch mill whips, 100 five inch mill extension whip. Uh, the system uses a 25 foot counterpoise wire and comes with a spike for ground mounting. This is a um, non-resonant antenna, so you're also gonna need a wide ranging um, antenna tuner or the auto tuner in your rig um, for, uh, to get a good match for, the, for your transceiver. Now even before we get started, the Silver Bullet um, is gonna win on price. A complete uh, setup with the coil, whip, radios, coax, and base is going to run you about $200, which is a really good deal for what you get. Uh, the Chameleon MPAS uh, 2 system, while quite full featured and very rugged, is over $500. But that also includes uh, the components necessary for a, a variety of wire, vertical, and horizontal deployments. You could purchase you know, the pieces a la carte to put together just a vertical antenna, but you're really not going to save that much money. So you do get quite a lot of capability for your dollars when you go with the Chameleon system. Well, first let's talk about deployment. Both systems set up quickly. There really isn't much of a difference between the two. Uh, the MPAS includes a spike for ground mounting of the antenna and the silver bullet. Um, I screwed into a jaw mount that I clamped onto a picnic table. I had either antenna up and on the air in less than 10 minutes each. 
Uh, one thing I like about the impasse is that you, know, you just um, kind of unfold the uh, bungee cords on the ends of this um, of this whip section here, and um, you can then screw this and the extensions together. Uh, for the silver bullet, um, if you're using the extendable whip, uh, you're gonna really need to decide on how far you, you're gonna want to extend this thing. Um, so, you know, that kind of makes um, for a little bit of variability in the uh, tuning of the antenna. So, you know, if you're like me and you wanna make tuning and adjustment quicker, uh, what I did was I just put a piece of, um, on, measured it out, and um, marked on the whip at the 102 inch uh, point so that I can quickly return to the um, approximate spots on the coil for a particular frequency. And really that's the big advantage of the impasse uh, because across the HF band uh, the antenna has an SWR of about 2.5 to 1 or less. So you know, if you're using an auto tuner or the built-in tuner on your rig, you can just hit that tune button and transmit. Even with a tra even with a manual tuner, um, like what I use um, in the field, yeah, the tuning process is, is relatively easy. And that's not quite the case with the Silver Bullet. You know, if you change bands, you're gonna need to adjust the coil. Now you can speed this process up by um, running a piece of tape along the side and making some marks, uh, but you're still manually, fid manually fiddling with the antenna. You know, you may find you need to adjust the radials and the whip a bit to find that sweet spot. So, you know, the band change process isn't quite automatic like it is with the Chameleon Impasse. Uh, and with that, I wanna talk a little bit about the radio system. You know, the Silver Bullet ideally works with three ground radios of about 32 feet in length. A single radio, you know, is not gonna, is not gonna cut it with this antenna. Um, I always, when I attach just one radio to it, you know, I really can't get that SWR down below 5.1. So when I add two radios and it drops, and then when I add three, it drops a little bit more. So with the 32 uh, foot length, uh, it works great on the um, 80 and 40 meter bands, uh, but 32 feet is gonna be too long for 20 meters. So what I end up doing is um, winding my uh, radial up to about half that length, and then um, I can get the, get the SWR, SWR down uh, much lower. So you know, it's a little bit of a process, like I said, you know, for tuning and adjustments to find really that sweet spot. Now, of course, with the MPAS system, you're trading performance for convenience. One big complaint I received on my previous reviews of the Chameleon MPAS is that, you know, since it is a non-resonant antenna, much of your RF energy is lost in the transformer. Plus, you know, um, adding a tuner to provide a proper match to the radio, you know, even adds a little bit more inefficiency to the system. But the big question is, is how much inefficiency? So the purpose of my recent parked activation was to give both antennas a workout in a real world environment. You know, most of the day I ran both antennas on the 20 meter band. Uh, my park activation was a bit of a bust due to the persistent sprinkles throughout the day, but I did contact a fair number of stations participating in the Washington Salmon Run. Uh, both antennas worked quite well on the 20 meter band, and I really had no problem, you know, working most every station that I, that I heard. But anecdotally, I would say that I found it an easier time with the silver bullet as I, it seemed to be uh, take more repeats with the impasse and stations had no trouble hearing me when I used the silver bullet antenna. Now moving on, Sunday morning, I did put both antennas on the 80 meter band to work the statewide Aries Races HF net. Uh, the net control, which was about 150 miles away from me, copied me on the silver bullet vertical, which was a little surprising to me, uh, considering verticals really don't work so well for regional or um, Envis type contacts. Uh, tuning around, I then did an AB uh, comparison on the 80 meter band and noted that the silver bullet was about two S units higher in uh, signal strength on received signal strength as compared to the impasse. Uh, since, um, you know, the general rule that is if you can hear a station, you can work them. You know, the, I, I'll note that this difference in signal strength, you know, may be enough to uh, Get, make that contact or break the pile up. So finishing up, you know, I believe both antenna systems have their merits. Uh, the Chameleon Impasse is quite rugged, it's compact, it's uh, very versatile. If there was only one uh, field antenna system that I could use, I would grab it just because of its versatility. As um, 
you, as I, you know, I used it this past summer, I found uh, the wire deployments just as useful as the vertical. Uh, plus, you know, not having to uh, fiddle with the various adjustments was quite nice, although you do have to rely on that tuner. But I'm not really, really ready to give up on my Silver Bullet 1000. Uh, the antenna is quite efficient and the coil is very rugged. You know, if there was a weakness uh, with the antenna, I'd say it's the extendable whip. Now, I've busted a few whips over the years and if the antenna tips over, you know, you run the risk of breaking that whip. Of course, you know, you can use a 102 inch stainless whip, uh, but that's gonna lessen uh, the portability of this style antenna. In an ideal world, you know, what I would do is I would take Chameleon's mill whip and I would mate it to the um, Silver Bullet 1000. And um, with that, I would have a super rugged, portable, and efficient vertical antenna system. Well, I hope this video cleared up some of the questions you may have had about uh, these two antenna systems and maybe shed some light on the key differences between using a transformer and a loading coil for a vertical antenna. Uh, so do you have any ex experiences with the Chameleon Hybrid Mini or Impass system and uh, the Wolf River uh, Silver Bullet coils? I'd love to hear them, so leave them in the comments below. You know, I'll filter through them um, and answer the questions, keep that conversation going. You know, maybe one of your questions might end up in my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. And for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so there's always a few things you can do for me. Number one, uh, give me that big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate that. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos alongside here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and the little bell notification will inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.